Good day and welcome to today's class. Today we shall be looking at data presentation and analysis. My name is Kaviru Abdulkado. Moving on, there are so many reasons why we collect data. Data are any numerical facts or information which can be measured or given a numerical qualification. Good data collection helps in decision making. Now, for example, this is a sample of a data collected on the 21st of May 2020 on COVID-19. So we have various different states and the number of cases recorded as at this date. Now, Lagos is having 3,093 cases. Kassina is having 303 cases. Then down to Adamawa, which is having 27 cases. Now, how do we arrive at a certain decision? Now, for instance, if we are going to consider sharing or distributing palliatives to these states, if we are also thinking of building isolation centers in these states, of course, you can't consider everything to be the same. States that are having highest number of cases are given the topmost priority. So this is one of the reasons why data is being collected so that we use it to conclude or come to a certain conclusion. Now, moving on, we are going to look at frequency distribution. A frequency distribution table is a table or graph showing the frequency. Frequency means number of counts. That is number of occurrence of a certain thing. Now, we have these are types of pets. And then we have dogs. 12 houses are keeping dogs as a pet. Now, what about cats? Just seven houses. Catfish, six houses. Boggy, three houses. Hamster, two houses. Lizard, only one house. Snake, one house. Rabbit, three houses. Now, table A is just for an ungrouped data. Why table B is for grouped data? Table B is about max of students in a class. Now, 20 to 30 students are having 5 marks. 30 to 40 students are having 8 marks. 40 to 50 students are having 9 marks. Down to 70 to 80 students, which are having just 2 marks. So the total number of students there are 40. Now, moving on now, we can look at linear graph. This is very easy. So they will give you a linear equation. In this case, we are given y is equal to 3x plus 2. And then we are told to construct a linear graph of it. So now we are taking the values of our x from minus 2 to plus 2. That is x is going to be minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. Now you have to substitute when x is minus 2, you get the value of y. When x is minus 1, you get the value of y. When x is 0, you get the value of y. When x is 1, you get the value of y. When x is 2, you get the value of y. Now, by the time you finish the substitution, you are going to have y to be minus 4 when x is minus 2, y to be minus 1 when x is minus 1, y to be 2 when x is 0, y to be 5 when x is 1, y to be 8 when x is 2. Remember that you are going to use a linear, you are going to use a graph paper, graph sheet in plotting your graph. So now you have your x axis and then your y axis. It depends on the scale, any scale of your choice if you are not given a particular scale. So now you plot the graph of this particular table. Now we'll now look at bar graph. Bar chart. Sometimes students always ask me, what is the difference between a bar chart and an histogram? Now, I always say, just look at a football field as a bar chart. We have bars there. The bars are the posts. You can see that there's always a distance between the first post and the second post. So if you consider that to be a bar chart, you will not be having problem remembering which one is bar chart and which one is histogram. So we have a very good example here. Now, these are some of the stationery that are used by students. We have pencils, we have erasers, we have uh, cleaners, we have rulers, 
we have some of them. So by the time you count the number of pencils, you see that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The number of ruler here is three. The number of virus here are two. The number of sharpener here are five. So going on to plot the bar graph now, you have something that looks like this. Number of those items are on your left hand side. That's your vertical axis, your y axis, and then your x axis will have the items, pencils, scale, pen, sharpener, eraser. So now you check the number of correspondence. Pencil is number eight. It's we have eight, so you have to make it correspond with number eight. Now scale, which is ruler, is the a three. You have to make it correspond with three. You can see that everyone is having gaps in between them. Now this is what we call a bar chart. They are having equal number of gaps. So moving on now, we'll now look at histogram. They are almost similar. The only difference is that they do not have gaps in between them. Now we have an example here. The following is a record of students offering various subjects in school. Chemistry, we have nine students. Physics, we have 12 students. Technical drawing, four students. Economics, 11. Home management, 16. Yoruba, six. Now we are now told to construct a histogram for this distribution. It is easy. All you have to do is to get a graph paper. Having done that, you have to make every number to correspond with what you have on your table. Now, chemistry, for instance, you know the number. Physics, you know the number. Technical drawing, you know the number. Economics, you know the number. So then you have to make the, the frequency and the subject correspond with one another. Now, without wasting time, we'll now move direct to pie chart. Now, pie chart is a circular graph that shows the relative distribution that different categories contribute to an overall total. Now below is a breakdown of the weekly expenditure of a housewife. So we have every month or weekly, we have expenditure and then we have amount. Rice, the housewife spent 600 naira, beans 250, provision 120, meat 230, vegetable 140, transport 260, and gari 200. So you have to prepare a table where you say expenditure and then you say amount. You calculate the total amount to be 1,800. Now, what is very important for you is the sectorial angle. Sectorial angle, like for rice, we have 600. You say divide by the total number, which is 1,800 times 360. So by the time you do your little multiplication there, you get 120 degree. That's what you do for all of them. And then at the end of the day, when you add everything together, the sectorial angle, you have 360 degree. So that is what you use in plotting your pie chart. Now your pie chart is going to look like this. Now you start with any one, just rule a line at the middle of your cycle. What you do now is to draw a radius that will go and touch a circumference, any side that you want. Then from there, you start your measurement from there. You have rise to be 120 degree. You measure. The last line you are stopping is the next line you are going to use to measure the next one. Now, beans, you measure starting from the end of the last line of your rise. You measure you have beans, 50 degree. The next one is provision. The last line is what you use to measure the next one. 24 degree is of provision, and so on until you finish drawing your pie chart. So with this, I believe we can now do pie chart, histogram, and bar chart, even frequency table very well. So now we have a very good one for us to try. Now in preparation for the lockdown announced recently, a man decided to buy the following items from the market to his house. Now we have items and then we have quantity. Yam, just 10 to us. Beans, we have seven plates. Rice, three plates. Water, four sachets. Coca-Cola, just three bottles. Onions, nine pieces. 
Now illustrate the information on the pie chart, bar chart, and histogram. Thank you very much for your time and stay safe.